So in part two of our class, um, I would like to get from intermediate WordPress skills to advanced. On part one, last month, we went from beginning WordPress skills to intermediate. And so this month assumes you have some experience in WordPress, and if you took last month, you do. You have some basic experience in WordPress. This month, we're going to talk about intermediate to advanced, and the big focus will be on the e-commerce aspect of it all. And so I've got a syllabus for you, and I'll have handouts, of course, just like last time. And so let me show you the syllabus. And again, the printer's not on at the moment. You can print it later. But your computer should be on. And at the top left, you want to open a computer window same place as before. Open computer window. Uh, open the network location classroom data Z. Scroll down and alphabetically you'll find Campus <coughs> WordPress 2. All the stuff from part 1 is still there in case you need to review it. But now we've got a new folder of part 2. If you look in that folder, you've got the syllabus, and you've also got uh, uh, handout number four, which I should have marked it as version two, because it is different. I gave you handout four last time, but this is actually version two, which I'll mention in a moment. And the end result of the class last month. So these three items, if you don't have the project from last month, you need that folder, and we'll use it together in a moment. There's a syllabus that we'll look at, and then there's also our, there's also sheet number four, version two, that we're going to use. So I'm going to drag those three items to my desktop. Don't just double click them. Drag them from my network folder to your desktop. Or if you uh, brought a USB, hopefully, you want to copy those things to your, to your USB drive. The syllabus the handout number four, and the work that we're going to do. So let's look at the syllabus. Again, you can print it a little bit later. The, the printer is off. And so what I've got here, uh, Cheryl, if you can get these, the handout right there. Uh, so, this is uh, our class from March 3rd to the 23rd, so we've got four weeks of instruction. The end of the month is um, spring break, so there's no classes on campus on the last week of March, first week of April. But this is a four-week class, and there's a lot of time to accomplish a lot of things, because we're going to go be between uh, beginning... Uh, I mean from intermediate to advanced WordPress. And uh, basically this description is right out of the catalog, but the big idea is, is that this in this course students will learn how to set up an e-commerce plugin, product inventory, billing, and shipping features. Students also learn about WordPress theme customization and backup management. Um, we'll use free resources again. We'll set up a powerful plugin for the storefront, our SLOs, Student Learning Outcomes, set up a server, set up the WP e-commerce plugin, set up PayPal for collecting payments, set up shipping methods. So all of these things that you need to know as a business. If you've got a website and you're selling stuff on the website, then uh, we, need all of the, we need to know all of those details because the question again is, are you sure you want to be the next Amazon? because Amazon deals with shipping and taxes and inventory and all of that stuff, and now you're going to need to also. Uh, so where did the pink sheet end up? Did everyone sign in? Okay, make sure you print your name on that. Pass it on, please. I've got a book here, recommended, Visual Quick Start Guide. It's the same one from last time, because WordPress, there's a lot to learn about WordPress. And even in a two-month class, even in a five-month class, there's always something new to learn. And there's always some way that it is different for different people. 
So that's a book I recommend. Any book on WordPress should be fine, but that's one I recommend. Uh, you should have a little rabbit on the cover. <coughs> also, it's recommended that you've got experience in, in Windows. We've got Windows computers here. If you're a Mac person, bring your Mac, you'll be fine. If you don't, can't bring your Mac, we've got Windows computers. I'll help you as best as I can, of course. But, um, you know, here, here we've got Windows computers. Uh, you should have basic experience in uh, website navigation, downloading files, all of that. The same stuff from last month. And you need to have some basic to intermediate experience in WordPress. If you came in brand new this month, you've never touched WordPress before, you're going to be pretty far behind. We had a whole month last month to talk about basic WordPress stuff. You're welcome to take the class. You're going to struggle, but I recommend take the basic WordPress class and come back to this one. It's offered all the time every other month or so this sequence of classes appears again. So rather than struggling on something complex, start with some basics and then come back. I'll still be here. If you have any DSPS needs, let me know and we can make accommodations. If there are any changes to the syllabus, um, I will let you know as soon as possible. And then we've got a calendar. So here's what I hope to accomplish on uh, this time here. Day one, we usually accomplish much more than this, but here's what I hope to accomplish. And so we're going to do some recap from part one. We are then going to go on to talking about something called the Apache Rewrite Module. We'll talk about updates. Updates are a big thing, an intermediate or an advanced aspect of WordPress that, we sh that we should be discussed. Then next time we go on to the actual e-commerce plugin and all that entails, adding products, images, etc. Then we go on to payment gateways. Someone has to process the credit cards. We'll have a lecture on that. Setting up payments, taxes, downloadable content. We'll talk also about um, more plugins that I recommend on top of the ones from last month deeper discussion on hosting providers and talking about deploying to a live environment. Because we're going to do the same thing from last month. We're going to work with WAMP. We're going to have a project that exists only on your computer. And eventually you want to upload it to the real internet. We'll have a discussion on that. And I didn't seem to exactly say it around here, but we're also going to talk about theme customization. Uh, maybe today, probably today, or on another day. We'll talk about some theme customization. So that's our goal for these four weeks. Any questions on that? Page three, of course, is the is the page about the student code of conduct. I mentioned it last time, but I have to mention it again. It's a new class, and so basically, students are subject to charges of misconduct and removal for violation of the student code of conduct, including but not limited to the following acts. Again, basic things you need to adhere to if you're going to take our classes: um, theft or damage to district property. So every time you uh, drop that mouse, I'm paying attention to that. Um, academic misconduct or dishonesty, unlawful conduct of a sexual nature, etc. All of these things can have you removed from the class. Um, failure to comply with directions of staff members of the district who are acting within the scope of their employment. So basic stuff, I mentioned it previously, I'm mentioning it again. We usually, we usually almost never have this trouble, but this is here to protect you and your colleagues and me. So any questions on the syllabus, or the class in general? OK, so um, what we need to do is we're going to set ourselves up from our project, based on our project from last week, and we're going to learn, learn some new stuff. So from the folder in the network, we have last week's work. Again, you can use your own from last time on your flash drive or I recommend use mine from last time so we're all on the same page. And so I've copied last week's work to my desktop that has the duplicator archive, it has that installer PHP file and that zip file. I think we're getting used to that, that our process is we're going to resurrect our site, um, bring it back to life. We're going to use that with sheet number four, which like I said, I should have marked it. No, I did. I marked it right there at the end, version two. This is version two. It's a little different than the one from last month. 
So go ahead and open up sheet number four, version two. <coughs> it's pretty much the same except it mentions a few different things. Specifically, specifically it mentions there's a little there's a new section right here that we need to that we need to talk about when we get to it, the rewrite module. Uh, this has to do with helping your SEO, your search engine optimization, and the links of your website. We'll get to that once we resurrect the site. And then I've also got page two, a recommendation slash advertisement for Duplicator Pro. We've got the basic Duplicator plugin, which is free and it works just fine. But there's a pro version, which is a little better. And it's also, you know, about $40. So $40 for this plugin, $40 for a little piece of software that is very helpful, which lets you back up your site, you know, redeploy it on another server. Um, and backups are very important. Now, why would you like to pay for, why would you like to get the paid version? I've found as you get with more, to get to more complex sites that get larger, you know, you've got an e-commerce site, you're going to add products, you're going to add pictures, maybe videos. Your sites are going to get larger and larger. The free version of the plugin at a certain point struggles a bit to make a backup of your site as it gets larger and larger. I believe at about 150 megabytes, if your site is larger than that, Duplicator starts to struggle a little bit. I've seen it in the real world with various clients. The paid version Hand, seems to handle the larger sites just fine. You may think that's kind of cynical, pay to get better results. Yeah, like the real world. You pay, you pay what you get for. Just because it's software or something on the computer that it's not real and you can't touch doesn't mean it's not valuable. So think about all of the things you spend on all the time that possibly you might not need. All those lattes you keep buying, all those shoes you keep buying, all those new shirts you keep buying. Those things could be also spent toward improving your website. And if you've got a good website, a profitable website, it pays for itself. $40 or whatever it costs is not that bad for a great plugin that really helps you. If you follow my affiliate link, so as I said, this is a recommendation slash advertisement. If you follow my affiliate link there, you'll get a discount on the plugin and I get a little something out of it. And I recommend it because if you don't follow the link, you pay the full price. And everyone wants to save a little bit of money, so that's there. We're not going to use it in this class. We don't need it. But if you have your own website and it is getting more complex, full-featured, um, the Pro Duplicator Pro often works better. And I've done it for, for clients. I've used it for clients. We're going to back up then and actually do what's in the section of resurrect your site. Remember this. Log into PHP my admin and create a database. Okay, what's step zero actually? If that's step one, what's step zero? We can't create a database with a WAMP server. So remember to double click WAMP server on the desktop. It should pop up in the corner here, red, W, red, orange, and green. So it was a week ago, but you should remember. You can click on the little green W in the bottom right corner and select localhost. Actually, I guess you can click on the little W and go directly to PHP My Admin. So this is step zero launch WAMP server and go to the address localhost slash php my admin step one create the database we've done this three times or so last time we'll do it again and again next time and next time and next time so we're on php my admin switch over to the databases screen we're creating a database called wordpress so in the box there, type WordPress, click Create. I get the feedback that I created the database. 
I see now I've got a total of five databases and also listed on the left. So that's not new. We did it several times last time. Next, copy your archived site into your WW folder. The archived site is this folder with last week's date. That's, that's our work from last week. It's in the network folder. I copied it to my desktop temporarily. And I have here, uh, copy your archived site into your WW folder. That assumes you remember that the WW folder is inside of my computer, local disk C, WAMP folder, WW folder. So move or copy last week's project, the whole folder, into the WW folder in the WAMP folder on the C drive. I'm going to copy that over. So we've got last week's work and we're going to continue, we're going to resurrect it with that installer.php file. Next step, in your browser access the installer.php file. Go to the address localhost slash the name of the folder slash installer.php. So back to the web browser. Back to the web browser and we will type the address http colon slash slash localhost slash 2016.02.24. Wait a minute, my handout says 2016.01.01. Why am I changing it? I don't have a folder in the WW folder called 2016.01.01. Therefore, in the address, I type the name of the folder that I have in the WW folder. Just because my handout says January 1st, and you type that, it's not going to work. You have to think one step outside the box. Sometimes following instructions exactly as they are doesn't work. What is your particular scenario? In our particular scenario, our project is that date, so obviously we, in, we type that date. Press enter. And then the duplicator plugin appears. If it doesn't, check your spelling. We've done this before, this should not be new. You'll be asked to fill in all of this stuff. Default server, local host. Oops, I forgot to fix that. That should be a lowercase local host. Default root is default login is root. Password is blank. Don't put anything in, in the password. And the database from step two back here. You created a database. We called it WordPress, so therefore our database is called WordPress. <coughs> Host is localhost, name of the database is WordPress, user is root, password is nothing, password is empty. Test it, success. You didn't get a success, that means you didn't create the database, you didn't name it what you thought you named it, you didn't type something right here. There's a couple of failure points. We've done this before, you should be able to figure it out. Next, click I've read all the warnings and run deployment. Confirm what you're about to do and click OK. This will bring back the site, put everything where it was, get us ready to go as if we, the way we ended on the last day last week. At this point, um, everything looks good so far. I'll just click Run Update. And so on my handouts, follow the on-screen instructions. After it succeeds, follow these steps. So we'll click on Save Permalinks. You're going to log in with Username admin and password password capital P.
that takes us back to our to our site, to our permalinks settings, which we'll look at in more detail in just a moment. The only thing we need to do here is at the bottom click Save. We didn't change anything, but just click Save Changes. further says um, make sure you do the steps the next step uh, back on the duplicator screen is security cleanup click number four security cleanup click OK on that and then I'll click that button delete to reserve files And so it removes these temporary files except one. My handout then says, return to your WW folder and delete the remaining zip file. This cleanup here did not delete the zip file. And it's going to complain to us later on, at the end of the day when we back up our site again, it's going to say you still have the old zip file there. So this plugin used to remove that as well. It would clean everything out, including that zip file. For whatever reason, when they changed to this new version, they took that ability away. Now we have to manually go back to the folder and delete the zip file. So I've got to send a complaint to the author to say, why did you take that feature away? Why did you take that feature away? I want to you to take care of it. So my handout is saying, return to your WW folder and delete the zip file. Here's my WW folder inside of the 2016-02-24 folder there's a zip file the one with a huge name just select it and delete it on your keyboard from your keyboard and then the handout log into your newly resurrected site and it's, it's an exact copy and for some reason number one here again that's supposed to be 11 but back on the site dashboard. The site is back and we're ready to go. We've done this together. Today's the th third time I believe we do it. Again, none of this should be new, but is everyone here? Anyone need a little help? Thank you. 
All right, so we should all have a, a site that we brought back to life from last time. And so um, if we uh, take a look back on visit site, remember on the top left corner, you jump back and forth between the two views. I'm in the dashboard. You want to quickly take a look at visit site. And so there's our site. And remember, we had all this fun putting that stuff on the sidebar and all that. I think people really responded well to that because of that widget that lets you put any amount of code on the sidebar and it renders it as, as code. But uh, the big focus this month will be adding the shopping cart and such. Uh, we'll, do that, uh, we'll do that next time because we've got other foundational things we're going to talk about now. If I go back to the dashboard, my version 2 of instruction number four. If you're still looking at instruction number four from last month, it's different. Make sure you get the ones from this month. Because now, version two of instruction four has a new little section here that we need to do. Because <coughs> this will make your site more search engine friendly, and we want that. We want the search engines to see our <coughs> site, and we want and we want the search engines to see that we follow the rules of the search engines and therefore get found and get traffic. Now, obviously, we've got an offline website that the search engines won't see, really, but once we upload it, this will be much more important. In order for this to work, we have to activate this option, and if you're using a Mac with Map Server, you don't have to worry about this at all. It's done already on the Mac, but for some reason on WAMP, it, it, you, we have to do this extra step. This extra step is click on your WAMP server icon. Your WAMP server icon is on the bottom right corner here, that little green W. Click on it, and then you will see, oh, there's a little misspelling here. Oh, no, uh, yeah, click on Apache. WAMP server, then Apache. See, there's Apache. And then there's Apache modules. <coughs> modules are all of these extra little features of the server. And for some reason, when we first install WAMP server, it does not have this little feature turned on. And I've got it there on my handout. We need to find from the list rewrite module. It's alphabetical, so scroll down. Click that button down there. Scroll down to find rewrite module. It's next to um, Request module. Be careful. Not request module. Rewrite module. <coughs> Click on rewrite module. You should see the little green W change color. Maybe it'll be red or orange, and then if you wait a bit more, then eventually <coughs> it'll become green again. Okay, so the point of that is to activate a feature so that on WordPress we can do the following. So that on WordPress, we can activate pretty permalinks. Pretty permalinks are what the search engines want. Let me explain that right now. So everyone got their green W there? We'll go back to WordPress. We'll go over to Settings, Permalinks. In your WordPress dashboard, hover over Settings and then select Permalinks. By default, WordPress permalinks are usually like this. I'm going to have victorsbakery.com slash p179. victorsbakery.com slash p11297. 
every page on your website is referenced by a number because that's its number in the database. The database is a collection of everything on your site. Everything on your site has a unique number. So by default, WordPress would name those things by its number. And that's terrible for SEO, for search engine optimization. If I want to get found by the search engines, I don't want to use the default permalink structure. Question. I'll help you in, in just a moment. And so the other possibilities are much better. Day and name, month and name, numeric or not numeric, host name. So numeric and default are not the good ones because they put a gibberish number on your addresses. What the web what the search engines want is a page named about us, a page named contact, a page named products, not a page named 1257 or 111 or 07. The search engines want human readable <coughs> addresses. That's what this screen is all about. So we need to select here any one of these, but oftentimes we select post name. Not default, not numeric. Custom is okay, but that's more advanced. Post name. We'll select post name, and then we'll select save. Question. When would people use default in your mind? When they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had already selected post name for your domain structure and you just go and put it in your websites, is this stuff unnecessary? It is. If you've already done it before, you don't need to do it again. So we won't have to do it again. Exactly. Once we archive our thing today, we won't have to do it again next time. And so this step uh, of adding these permalinks, of setting the permalinks, is simply you go to the screen and click Save, and it does it. We have to, I had to have an extra step here about rewrite module because WAMP server, this software that we're using, doesn't, uh, for some reason, you get 404 errors, you get broken links. If you try to save the permalinks first without setting this rewrite module first. And so I've got it here on my notes. We want to activate the rewrite module just like we did and then save the permalinks. And then now when I go back to visit site and I go from my home page to my about us page, I should not have a broken link or my blog page and such. If I'm getting broken links jumping from page to page, it's because I'm trying to go to the about page but Apache is not seeing it as about page, it's seeing it as 127. And therefore there's no page 127, it's an about page. Apache is the web server, the, the place where the, where the site is on the virtual web. And um, now if I go from page to page, it actually names it with these real names instead of the numbers in the database, which are not helpful for you. When we put this on the real internet, if your website still has those numbers in the address, that's not good. The search engines are not going to place you as well when someone searches. It's one of the many aspects of SEO. I talk about it in the SEO class in more detail, but I touch upon it here and there in this class too. So did everyone get that to work? If you go from page to page, do you see real addresses? Do you still have the, the question there in the back? <coughs>
you're on a Mac, um, do you still have to go into the permalink settings? Or? On the Mac, you should still go to permalinks and set your permalinks like we did, but you don't have to do anything about activating a rewrite module. It should be done. If you didn't activate it, what would it work? Would you just not have some options? It would just not work. Uh, if, I, if I'm on the home page and I clicked on About Us, it would say 404 not found because it would be trying to access an address that doesn't exist. That rewrite module rewrites those old ugly links into the new modern pretty links. So these uh, sometimes are called pretty links because that's much better to look at about than p equals 179. That's an ugly link. But that's the default in WordPress. And so if you're, if you're on your way to making a real website, let's say you buy service at GoDaddy and you put a WordPress website online, let's say you've had a WordPress site for a few months and you see that your addresses still say victor.com slash p equals whatever, that's not going to help you with the search engines. You need to have something that looks like victor.com slash about us. Human readable addresses. And in the old days, if you were using software like Dreamweaver, that was a classic way to build a website, and it would be very difficult to change your links because they were, they were linked together within your site, and sometimes making one little change broke the whole site. WordPress, because everything's saved in a database. Uh, and when you make one change inside of that permalink screen, it just changes a quick little thing in the database, and everything changes. And that's much better for you nowadays for SEO. Uh, what I would say is sometimes you see... Um, let's say you've got an address that's the products page. That's not as good as if it was called the dash products dash page. What's the difference? <coughs> the dash. If you run it all together like that, the search engine see that is one gibberish word. There's no word in the English language called the products page but there is the products page. So the search engines will see with those dashes, those are real words that we can understand. And when someone searches for a particular keyword and such, they can find your site better. Let's say I have a page on my site. Uh, what is Peach Social Network? As opposed to the one without dashes, the search engine cannot find any delineators that can exp that can uh, that can help you get found. Even you, as a human, you're probably getting fatigued trying to read that as opposed to that. I can read that. I have a harder time reading the other one. So does the search engine. People then ask, well, what about underscores? Underscores work fine. If you put underscores between your let your words, that's fine also but much more common are the dashes. Yes? I often know the difference of the bang. The actual exclamation point? Mm -hmm. The actual exclamation point? No, the... Uh, That's the bang. It's on the, uh, uh, on the keyboard. Above the backslash. It's a vertical one. I've seen that show up in a lot of Yeah, that's interesting. I don't see it as much, but maybe on the sites that you're visiting, the short answer is don't use it. <coughs> don't use it because that piped character, it's, it's the piped character, oftentimes it has a special meaning and, it, and you don't often really want to use it in addresses because it could actually do weird things on the server. That's a bit more of a command on, on some servers than an actual sort of like delineator. Oh, okay. In the title is just fine. Up here, because I've got it there. About us, pipe, Victor's Bakery. That's fine. Just visual. Having that pipe character just delineates the name of the page divider the name of the site any sort of symbol sometimes people use asterisks or dashes or whatever other symbol there but what you really want to see is your addresses here 
don't run the words together, don't put spaces, that also causes problems. Put dashes or underscores, much more recommended dashes. And that's so easy to do right here in our permalinks screen. And, uh, yes? What does that term permalink really mean? And it's supposed to be that there is some sort of permanent link online that references your address. This is not supposed to change. It's permanent. If I follow this link this month or next year, it should still be the same link. I should not be changing my links. They should be permanent. But sometimes we have to do that. What if you did have a website where you did not use dashes or you know, a more modern way to do it. What if you did name your pages something like this? Don't simply go in and rename them. That'll break traffic to your site. The search engines possibly saw your website and had a link to your website when it was like that. But if you changed it over to have the dashes, now you've got broken links. And that's also not good for SEO. Let me make some notes here, and I'll put these notes in the folder. Permalinks are good for SEO. So, specifically, pretty permalinks. We saw that we can have a permalink of numbers and a permalink of uh, other ad uh, dates and such. Uh, Pretty permalinks are, are the full names of, of things. Those are much better than, than plain old numbers. And um, I was saying up here, descriptive links. Are very good and then if you change if you uh, I'm gonna say be careful about changing links if you change links and cause things to break if you had the home page and it used to go to the about the company page and you change it to simply about you could have a broken link. Uh, if you change links, make sure you set up a 301 redirect. We will do that later in the course. What is a 301 redirect? How do you set one up? But basically this is telling the search engines um, that address that used to exist, now it's this address. The search engine doesn't know that automatically. It'll keep trying to check the old address. And if it checks the old address and it doesn't exist, it'll put one demerit against you. And there's no guide that tells you, if you've got seven broken links, you're going to drop to page two. If you've got 40 broken links, you're going to be on page 12. There's no like hard numbers. If there are, they're trade secrets. The search engines don't tell us this stuff. So the least amount of, the short answer is, the least amount of broken links on your site, the better. If you do have broken links, you need to fix them so that when people go to the broken link, it actually takes them to the fixed link. We'll see how to do that together later. It's a plugin that helps you do this. It's like in the real world. If uh, someone asks you, how do I get to, May uh, how do I get to uh, City Hall? and you're giving them directions to the city hall that hasn't been there in one year because they moved down the street, you've made someone annoyed. They followed your directions, they went to old city hall location, it's longer there. You should be giving them the new directions to the new city hall. Same thing on search. You don't want to direct people to an old broken link. You want to direct them to your new link with a 301 redirect. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our, our first break. I'm going to put the handouts, one more handout actually, into the network folder. You can print them now if you'd like when I turn that on. Um, 
because I'm also going to add the handout for when we do the e-commerce stuff. We're not going to get to it today, but I'm going to let you have it today so you can start looking at it. Let's take our break. It's 135. We'll be back at 145. And I've got handouts number four and five there. And remember, this is handout number four, version two. If you still got the one from last month, get the new one. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Make sure you've enrolled. Make sure you took the little enrollment sticker and you signed in.